This presentation is called, Can We Explain the Demographic Transition? And on the other side of the big boom is something quite unexpected that we can call the Great Slowdown. So in some areas of the world, population growth has not merely slowed down, but it's stopped. Most prominently in nations like Japan and Russia, where populations are actually declining, this entire process from the pre-industrial pattern of slow increase through the big boom to the great slowdown is called the demographic transition. So the demographic transition begins with a period of high fertility and high mortality. That's a long-term pattern of human existence. And because mortality is high as well as fertility, population growth rates were quite slow over most of human history. The Great Slowdown is marked by a period of low fertility and low mortality. So although mortality rates are low, low fertility rates mean that population growth is also slow or negative. And in between these two regimes comes what we call the Big Boom. And this is a period of high fertility and low mortality. And that bulge between the birth rate and the death rate is what took the human population from 1 billion people to 8 billion people in the space of 200 years. The Great Slowdown is a Darwinian puzzle and that's because fertility has been decreasing despite increased resources. And as Monique Bogerhoff Mulder notes, behavioral ecologists are puzzled by the emerging negative correlations between wealth and reproduction. And this appears to mark a great transformation from a pre-industrial pattern where more resources almost always equal higher fertility and population growth. So that people ended up with very large families whenever mortality declined because the birth rate stayed very high. And it was quite common then through the period of the big boom for rural families to have eight or nine or 10 surviving children. But in the post-industrial populations, we see even greater resources, but lower fertility. And this is the Darwinian puzzle. Why aren't people investing their resources to increase their fertility? Three hypotheses have been offered to try to explain this. And the first hypothesis comes from evolutionary psychology. And it argues that the decrease in fertility in a context of greater resources represents a maladaptive response to a novel environment. And of course, this is a standard argument in evolutionary psychology that the industrial environment is so novel that we shouldn't be surprised to observe maladaptive behaviors. And as an example of this, in the USA, there are 78 square miles of indoor storage space where people are storing their stuff. Meanwhile, family size continues to decline. The problem with this hypothesis is that in pre-industrial economies, people routinely invested increased wealth into increased reproductive success. And it's rather difficult to identify what it is about the current environment that leads to maladaptive decision making and decreased fertility. So unlike arguments about increased amounts of fat and sugars and calories in the industrial diet that are maladaptive, it's rather hard to identify the maladaptive elements of increased wealth. 
Human behavioral ecologists, of course, focus more of their attention on how humans adjust their behavior to produce adaptive outcomes in different environments. And a hypothesis offered by human behavioral ecologists to explain the great slowdown is that there's a quantity quality trade-off in a highly competitive environment. And one aspect of this that many of you are well familiar with is a tremendous increase in cost of going to college over the cost of living. And the idea is that if you have fewer children, you'll have more resources to support them in college. And so people are reducing their numbers of children and trading off the quality of children against quantity in terms of their ability to invest in the child's success. But there's a problem with this hypothesis too, and the problem is that the evidence doesn't support it. So the best predictor of reproductive success in industrial societies as well as pre-industrial societies is the number of children, not the investment made per child. So if you want a lot of grandchildren and great-grandchildren, the best way to accomplish that is to have a lot of children, not to send your children to college. The third hypothesis comes from dual inheritance theory which emphasizes the interplay of culture and genes. And the argument that dual inheritance theorists have offered is that lower fertility results from living and learning among non-kin, or what they call oblique transmission. So they point out that education is quite important in modern industrial societies, and that children learn a lot from individuals who are not their parents. It's also the case that in these societies, people live among non-kin, but at the core of this, they argue that it's novel in this environment, the degree to which child socialization is given over to teachers. And the result of this, when you combine it with the observation that children from small families achieve higher educational success, is that if children emulate their teachers and pursue education in what's called prestige bias learning, they too will end up with smaller families and higher incomes. The model is considerably more complex than that. It always is when we're dealing with culture. And the dual inheritance model suggests that there's an interaction between the rate of technological innovation and the degree to which we live among non-kin, and the importance of oblique transmission like education, and that it's in this context of rapid technological innovation and living our lives among non-kin that we end up with a regime of low fertility. The outcome of this, though, appears to be paradoxically beneficial, at least in some ways, so this may be maladaptive in relation to individual reproductive success, but it may well be adaptive in relation to the collective prospects of humanity if this process ends up slowing and stopping the rate of population growth. The downside and possible negative to this is that the material acquisitiveness of these people from small families and high incomes might defeat the decrease in their numbers in terms of their ecological impact. Thank you for listening.